Welcome to Nelly 2.0. It's been a long way from the first public release to this version. Some 15 years ago, only the real hardcore geeks dared to use Nelly. What? But over time, more and more normal people joined the Nelly community as well. Hi. While I was busy improving the discovery, supporting new devices, I haven't found the time to keep up with the GUI. This has changed for 2.0, but besides the front-end redesign, a lot of other improvements make it worthwhile. Let's have a look. For those new to Neti, let me explain what it actually does. At the core, we have the network discovery, usually run every hour. This scales well for networks with up to 500 switches and routers. Larger networks can have it run in parallel and use intervals of up to 4 hours, for example. This process gathers system information, interface statistics, VLANs, modules, ARP and MAC address tables. Another discovery can be scheduled once at night to back up the configurations of all supported network devices in addition. The discovered devices can then be added to monitoring, which checks uptime and latency in a 2-5 minute interval. Uplinks and PGP peers can be monitored amongst some other things as well. Monitoring thousands of targets is no problem. Last but not least, Neti features a syslog service, which can alert on critical events within seconds. Let's have a look how all of this works. Here is Neti 2.0, or is it not? Yes, this is actually Neti 1.9 Community Edition, which is available to the public right now. Download the OVA here and deploy on your hypervisor. Login with root root or user user. I recommend changing the password for root and user as soon as possible. Check the DHCP IP. A static IP is recommended if you use the VM in production. It will also fix the TFTP server startup. Once we know the address, we can browse to it with HTTPS. After logging in, we are in the profile where display formats, language and theme can be set. I've matched the themes to those of Neti 2.0 as only those four are supported going forward. Underneath the settings, we have the admin notice showing some help to get started. It can easily be edited to show anything you want once you no longer need it. The easiest way to the first discovery is the setup module now. It's also available through the system setup menu. All required SNMP communities can be set here. Enter the most frequent ones first, then provide the CLI credentials, which are used for config backups and much more efficient MAC address retrieval on Cisco switches. Once done, you can enter an IP address or range using hyphens or commas, like so. The resulting IP will be contacted directly. Check the discover protocol to discover CDP or LDP neighbors, or route to follow routing tables and then click start. A new tab with the discovery will open and can be followed by double clicking the text area. The output turns yellow and keeps scrolling down to the bottom. Going back to the system setup tab and clicking the main icon will reload the page to reveal the newly added devices and nodes. This can be repeated for other IP addresses or ranges until all desired components are discovered. We can go to system files to schedule regular discoveries. Uncomment the first line for hourly discoveries and the second one for backups at night. Now that the network has been discovered, we can look at the devices. Note that Cisco devices have a blue icon and HP a green one. The computers are referred to as nodes in Neti and are listed here with details shown here. What about Neti 2.0? Yeah, where is it? If you buy a Neti subscription, you will get the full 2.0 version and the update is very easy to do through the web interface. Let's first turn off the services. A configuration backup can optionally be created and downloaded. Delete it from the log folder as it contains sensitive information. Now update Neti and review the changes. The next step is to update the database, which is as simple as this. 
Now we can start the services again and be done with it. We could also initialize the database for a fresh start. Let's do that now. Everything is empty again. One of the new features in 2.0 is an optimized port scan for identifying computers even without access to any network device. This works best on a subnet in SIDA notation as it performs a fast F-Ping scan first. The stats are automatically updated now. The scan results can be displayed here. But back to the discovery of devices. We can now use fping as well to discover a whole subnet rather quickly. Once happy with the discovered devices, we can go straight to scheduling regular discoveries here. Behold the new and clean list view. Let's use the only active button. The bunch of icons in the middle have been removed in favor of the quick access select box. Try it to get ideas. Most GUI modules show a report by default to help you quickly filter a list by clicking on numbers. I reset the form to bring up those reports again by clicking on the main icon. Clicking on a group instead of a number takes you to the filtered report for further processing. The title not always matches the menu entry. But you can always check where you are by following the bold menu items, hovering over the main icon or by looking at the footer. The device icon colors no longer represent vendors, but the system state like high CPU or temperature and low memory. The icon turns red upon first detection, then orange in subsequent discoveries or blue if it has been acknowledged. Thresholds for those alerts can be edited as soon as a filter is applied. When SNMP write access is available, location and contact can be edited directly in the list by users in the admin, manager or maintenance group. An SNMP OID can be walked in real time for shown devices. Now I've actually used uptime because this is customized in SNMP tools which can be accessed through system files. At last, filtering also enables the monitor button for adding shown devices to the monitoring process. This service checks all targets every few minutes whether they are still alive. Monitoring related settings and notifications can be configured here. As an example, I'm just going to change the latency threshold for this target. Now we can add reports like system and monitoring alerts to the monitoring map module. which can be then used on the big screen in the Network Operations Center. By the way, this module started out as an interactive map, hence the name. The good old health page is still available too. For those new to NETI, if you configure the SNMP location as recommended, you get this topology view for free. You can drill down into locations and while you do so, the top graphs disappear and only information and events from the location you are viewing is displayed. There is also a table view without the monitoring part. The appearance can be changed to provide an interactive documentation of your sites. The device status also provides interactive search, which works much better for large networks than the select box did before. Contact and location can be set from here as well. If the interface configuration mode is activated either by this select box or the button here, you can also enable or disable interfaces, change the alias or the pivot. All changes are locked in monitoring events. Another addition is the VLAN manager, which works for HP Aruba and Cisco IOS switches right now. Following the new concept, it's shown as soon as you apply a filter to the VLAN list. A VLAN can be added to the listed devices. Clicking Show 
adds a configuration column to inform what would be sent via CLI or why it won't be configured. Clicking the Send button above the list will finally roll out the VLAN. Deleting a VLAN works in a very similar and easy manner. Support for more switches will be added. The same goes for the optical signals of transceivers. As of now, NEDI supports Cisco, Arista, Zeixel, MRV and Edge Core devices. This report shows power levels changing over time. The corresponding interface is shown with statistics in a radar chart to complete the picture. If NEDI's cable management is in use as well, finding faulty patches is almost fun. Alright, that was slightly exaggerated. One last thing. The NetFlow collector works out of the box. Just send the streams to port 2055 and have a look at notes traffic. In this version, the senders are shown as well and can be listed with their in and outbound interfaces. The overall handling has been improved to complete the network management capabilities of NetFlow. I will go into a lot more detail in upcoming tutorials. Get in touch with me if you want to buy a subscription. I can help you with the install as well. Thanks for watching and goodbye.